Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cosima Bruno and I teach at SOAS modules of modern Chinese literature, uh, culture and translation. And this evening I'm going to share with you uh, one of my research interests um, and talk uh, of issues of uh, uh, territorial and linguistic parameters used in the definition of contemporary literatures. Um, I'm going to look at some, a sample of works because we don't have a lot of time uh, by uh, Chinese migrant writers who have um, extended uh, not only uh, uh, the geographic, but also the uh, linguistic and cultural delimitation of Chinese national literature. So for almost, I think, three decades, even more than that now, uh, scholarly discourse has been attempting to break uh, the national uh, boundaries of uh, literatures from around the world, and especially of those literatures uh, produced in a uh, hyphenated context, such as the British Chinese, for example. So many have been advocating a narrative of multiple uh, relation, uh, relations that uh, 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 goes beyond the paradigm of ethnicity and uh, um, nationality. Uh, how can I, oh, let me see if I can, yes. Um, Edouard Grisson uh, um, uh, in this uh, uh, seminal book, The Poetics of Relation, uh, convincingly uh, invites uh, the reader to consider uh, literature in general and Caribbean literature in particular, uh, in this case, as the product of an intricate uh, uh, network of interactions among various cultures. Also, um, François Lyonnais and Chouchoumé uh, in 2005 invoke a horizontal rather than vertical model of uh, uh, um, uh, for minority culture, cultural formations, and their uh, relations with the uh, majority culture. Um, another scholar is Michel Yeh, uh, who points out that uh, um, so, um, since several uh, uh, modern Chinese poets studied abroad, uh, they uh, developed uh, close contact with the literature, uh, literatures from other countries and therefore uh, convincing, uh, uh, convincingly she said that uh, 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 these poets have conceived a poetry that was hybrid in its literary reference as well as in its language. And also another person I refer to in my study is uh, uh, Jahan Mazar, Ramazani, uh, who argues for a reconceptualization of 20th and 21st century poetry uh, studies. Um, and I quote, he says, straddling not only the transatlantic divide, but also the vast historical and cultural division, divisions, uh, divisions between uh, global north and south, east and west, end of quote. So we can certainly identify a transnational community composed by a London poets of uh, Chinese heritage. Um, but my question is, does this mean that the question of who we are uh, ethnically and nationally uh, does not matter anymore today? 
And the poet Anna Chan, uh, she once introduced herself in this way. I was born in the far east of London, in the enchanted land of Hackney. My dad's from China, my mother's from Dagenham, I am Dagenese. So you can see that the poet defines herself a little absurdly, perhaps, creating a new national identity of her own choosing. In the same way, uh, <coughs> sorry, the poet Yan Lian stated that he has changed from being a poet of China to a poet writing in Chinese to a poet writing in Yanglish. In fact, identity is a fluid concept formed in the crucible of politics, cultural legacy, and language. And it is about having a sense of belonging that does not necessarily subscribe to the means uh, of returning home, and most importantly, is not entirely defined by the subject, but also by the wider context around her or him. So these literary works that I've been looking at uh, produ were produced in London by poets of uh, Chinese heritage who are uh, foreign born uh, or London native. And some of these works are written in English and some in Chinese, some others in Chinglish. Uh, to use uh, Lin Yu Tang's another migrant uh, Chinese writer uh, definition that he used uh, from um, perhaps a century ago. And the aim is to overview, discuss, and engage broader theoretical discourses with uh, uh, poetry produced in the cultural capital of London, which has emphatically or reluctant, reluctantly uh, embrace the identity narrative, um, often breaking many of the boundaries of Chinese national and ethnic uh, affiliation. So naturally, I will not have time to introduce all of those points that uh, I listed earlier on in one of my uh, uh, slides, but um, I have some guideline or uh, guiding questions perhaps that I want to share with you. And these are, how do these poets experience uh, with uh, London translate uh, into literary production. Uh, is there any reciprocal accommodation between their uh, writings and the place where uh, they have been produced? Um, another is what are the contextual circumstances, linguistic behavior, uh, and literary mediation in the works of these London poets of Chinese descent? And finally, is there a theoretical framework that is able to shed light on and accommodate such a varied corpus of works? So on the particular issue or hyphenated literature, quite a wide range of studies and anthologies is available on Chinese American literature. Uh, so much so that at the end of the 1990s, uh, uh, the scholar uh, Shen Mei Ma uh, individuated, I quote, a current academic fixation, end of quote, on literature in English from the so-called third world uh, and from minorities within the so-called first world. At the same time, however, 
uh, uh, he laments that literature written in Chinese by uh, Chinese immigrants in the USA is studied by a mere handful of Sinologists, despite, I quote, the immense Chinese readership at home and abroad, end of quote. And concludes uh, finally that uh, language rather than historical colonization uh, is the key to a text uh, inclusion or exclusion in postcolonial discourse. Conversely, according to my findings, a very little interest is demonstrated in the works uh, written in both Chinese and English in the UK. And uh, even less uh, has been produced on poets of Chinese heritage in London. And this absence is quite perplexing to me because, uh, not, not just because it is in opposition with uh, uh, what happened in, in the USA, um, but because it may point to uh, the danger that the uniqueness uh, of these writers' contribution to English and Chinese uh, letters will be at uh, best underappreciated, at worst lost. So for example, uh, I mean, this is just an example. It, it, I was very disappointed uh, um, uh, uh, to notice that in a book that uh, bear, uh, uh, bears uh, the promising uh, um, uh, title of uh, Voicing of the Crossing, the Impact of Britain on Writers from Asia, the Caribbean and Africa, uh, published in, two, in the year 2000, no writer of Chinese descent is mentioned. Moreover, among the generally uh, not much known uh, 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 London poets of Chinese descent who write in English, many of the authors that I have been investigating for years now are only partially and anyway uh, very rarely included in any UK major Chinese department libraries. Um, so how is a uh, uh, language related to Chineseness? For a long time, the written Chinese language has been working as a kind of glue that uh, binds uh, literate uh, uh, Chinese together as a building block of the Chinese imagined community, a strong sense of membership in a unique discourse uh, uh, community. And this, uh, um, uh, especially a, a, a scholar by the name of uh, uh, Tu Weiming, has explained uh, in his article, quite influential article, uh, entitled The Living Tree, the Center as the Periphery. But this was based on the presumption that a Chinese diaspora had to uh, uh, speak Chinese and in the uh, reverse presumption that foreigners, especially Westerners, cannot possibly ever fully learn to speak Chinese. So there is a, a, a historian called uh, Wang, Wang Gungwu, uh, who in 2013 uh, points out how the uh, dominant imagery of a single Chinese diaspora actually serves political strategies of identity that continuously draw back to the uh, nation center. And another famous scholar, uh, called uh, Jin Zhu, uh, she notes that a, uh, a tolerated essentialist, she says, uses the notion of the mother tongue to support expressions of cultural belonging with the native speaker as its center. And in fact, the emotional investment of the Chinese in the, in the Chinese language for those who have known uh, it 
all their lives is synonymous with being Chinese. So this is what I want to avoid, this kind of uh, what she calls tolerated essentialism of the mother tongue and use instead language as a verb, as something that has a, a, um, agency in a, a meaning making, um, as some uh, um, social linguists have argued. So London writers of Chinese descent may be experiencing a, a state of linguistic estrangement, um, no matter if they write in Chinese or English, uh, their discordant uh, usage of language displays a, a, a resounding uh, xenophony. For example, let us look at work, at, uh, work by um, Hannah Lowe, um, who uh, uh, adds uh, more nuances to the uh, depictions of a creolized relational concept of home that I was uh, mentioning uh, in the beginning as a space that simultaneously incorporates that uh, the, the year and there. And so um, she was born in 1976 uh, in Britain to an Afro-Jamaican Chinese father and a white English mother. Um, um, so Hannah Lowe published uh, um, her uh, semi-autobiographical collection entitled Chick in 2013. And she uh, and here she narrates her cultural inherita inheritance uh, through uh, two main tropes. Her father's gambling habit uh, that she sees as a, a familiar uh, tradition transmitted to him from the Shanghainese grandfather and uh, um, of food uh, of a, a cultural signifier, as a cultural signifier. And so as these uh, um, um, uh, these stanzas uh, uh, excerpted uh, from the poem, The Three, uh, the three uh, Treasures, um, illustrate um, England downstairs in a rocking chair, Nana rocking with her playing cards, Six and Toffee, tepid tea, Jamaican fried chicken in the kitchen, Big Snout in the stew pot, breakfast pan of salt fish ake, China in the wanton skin, gold songbird on the brittle porcelain, pink pagoda silk city, England for the English in graffiti, on the roundabout and bath shelters, please sir, on TV. Jamaica on the phone at 3 a.m. My father's back home voice through fuzz and crack. My friend, long time no see. China in the Cantonese he knew, but wouldn't speak in letters stuffed in shoe boxes, ink stick calligraphy. China in his slender bones, in coral birds of stitched bamboo. China in an origami butterfly that flew. So we can see already from these excerpts that uh, pidgin English, heteroglossia, and multiple cultural backgrounds within the London context are the uh, telling features of a uh, relational poetics. Stanza by stanza, you see the poet condensate the multiple linguistic, ethnic, and cultural dimensions into the space of a single building, her home. And so the patois of 
uh, Jamaican, Cantonese and English is used to set the persona's familiar space with food and objects named in different languages, composing this multi-story building of cultural affiliation. <coughs> so the transcription of a, a familiar non-standard diction is able uh, uh, to convey the language of intimacy, if you like. It is in such discordant use of language that words become carriers of personal uh, histories, um, uh, reflecting the uh, intertwining of stories, memories, and voices of mixed provenance. Uh, Pidgin English is only one but widely recognized discordant languaging. It has been praised uh, as a writing practice um, that can enhance expressivity by authors as different as uh, George uh, Bernard Shaw and uh, Otto Jespersen. And in the particular variety of Chinglish, it was eloquently advocated uh, by uh, the literary polymath uh, Lin Yutang, as I said in the beginning, uh, in the 1930s. Uh, and it, it has been uh, also used in many London authors of Chinese uh, heritage, uh, such as uh, Anna Lowe, uh, but also uh, Jin Mei Ling, uh, Jennifer Wong, and uh, uh, Xiao Li Wang. Uh, many contemporary writers, such as uh, um, Doc Fu Chan, um, Yan Lian, uh, uh, Hong Bin Liu, and uh, Shen Wai Quan, uh, Jennifer Wong, and Xiao Lu Guo are also uh, able to uh, interchangeably uh, live in the cultural capitals of Beijing, London, Berlin, New York, Hong Kong, or Paris. So their work presents us with uh, bodies, families, communities, and nations uh, 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 connoted by the fluidity and diversity of contemporary life. Um, uh, and I see them as complicating the uh, unilateral relationship between belonging and location. So in many cases, the home left behind does not trigger nostalgia, but is instead perceived as a uh, confining space that uh, wither inspiration. So uh, there is actually a, 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 a scholar called uh, Carlos uh, Rojas, um, uh, who has uh, wittingly uh, elaborated uh, in his book, Homesickness, um, where uh, uh, he says that, you know, he presents uh, some instances in modern Chinese literature where home itself becomes a space of illness. And consequentially, uh, homesickness comes to be understood as a, a condition not caused by a, a longing for home, but rather by a, an excessive proximity to it. And you can imagine that this is uh, very often the case of exile uh, poets. Um, so, um, a born um, and raised in post-British uh, occupation Singapore, uh, Stephanie Doc Fu Chan adopts a, a post-colonial approach. Uh, she has populated the London uh, scene from 2009 to 2013. And in 2012, she won the UK Farrago Slam uh, Championships. Um, and in the same year, she represented the UK in the European Slam uh, um, um, uh, uh, Championship in uh, Antwerp, um, uh, coming third uh, uh, 
th in third place. And in 2013, again, she represented the UK in the Poetry Slam World Cup in Paris, being shortlisted for uh, the semi-finals. And she participated at the Edinburgh uh, Free Fringe uh, in 2013. And in general, she was very active in Poetry Fringe festivals and slam poetry events all over London, performing in all sorts of venues. And her poetry almost exclusively deals with political and social issues. Um, and uh, uh, I think I put here, yes, on her uh, uh, website, um, I thought I wrote it on, a, okay, sorry. Um, so on, um, on her uh, website, she writes, um, um, she describes herself in these two ways. Um, the first is long, short, long story short, she writes, Awkward 20 something from the Far East moves to London for the first time to find her place in history and the world. While dodging riot cops, spies, bailiffs, orientalists, and haters, she will try to make sense of the bizarreness of living in the so-called center of the world in the 21st century through poems and stories, hilarity and shifts. And then she writes, long story long, in 2009, Stephanie Chan got off a plane at Heathrow, joining millions of colonial subjects through Houtistory who felt the need to live in the same town as their queen. Join her in the strangeness years of her life as the Gullivans around London attempting to take its men, eat its women and steal its jobs. She explores what it means to be foreign, what it means to be home and why the hell everyone from everywhere feels the need to go away to find themselves. So this kind of narrative, as you can see, shows how travel can merge with a history of colonial discourse, uh, constructing the English-Chinese uh, distinctions as native and foreigners. It addresses issues of cultural inequity, engages with identity and political scenes, and uses a demystifying tone to question English authority. And um, uh, Stephanie Dokfu Chan uh, displays confidence in her home ground uh, because places and also uh, 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 speeches in London uh, um, and the fact that she has represented the UK in uh, European fringe uh, uh, festivals endorses all of this. So like for uh, Lowell and others uh, um, uh, poets too, uh, also uh, for Chan, uh, her own cultural context is by uh, definition uh, um, a hybrid. In an interview with 2009 UK national poetry uh, slam champion, uh, Pete the, uh, the Pimp, uh, uh, Chan talks of how she grew up uh, reading bestsellers of London, children, writer, uh, Enid Mary Blyton, and how she took her nick nickname, uh, Dogfoot, from the protagonist of uh, uh, In the Children's Story, uh, Daggy Dogfoot, by uh, English writer uh, Dick King Smith. So by affirming the need to go away to find themselves, the psychological space of elsewhere is for Chan, London, the UK. And yet London with its uh, um, colonial history of power is also the home that the uh, post-colonial subject claims as their own. 
Um, this poem here, the 29 poem, um, uh, the 29 bars is uh, uh, given as a setting and uh, a stroke of London's multicultural population. Uh, this is a bus that traversed London from north uh, in Wood Green to the centre in Trafalgar Square, and it is rode by um, I put the grumpy Turkish man or the Spanish uh, Malbec uh, queen. And because she writes, it is a little known rule on the 29 that there has uh, to be an, an, a member of every continent represented on the bus at uh, all times or it will explode. And 100 uh, years uh, from now, Long after London has crumbled to the ground, the buildings have corroded away and the lions on Trafalgar Square have finally acted and left for warmer climate, the 29 will still be running. So a similar relationship between the persona and the city of London is described also in this other poem, L&D, you know what I mean. Uh, and here places become personified or maybe people have become places uh, because she writes, hey, Haringey, I'm sorry, I stole your lighter. Hey, Brixton, I'm sorry, I missed you last Sunday night. So the persona, who is a post-colonial subject is susceptible uh, to the lure of the city and wants to be recognized as um, uh, forming part of it uh, because she writes, take a picture to preserve me. I want to be remembered on these streets full of faded footprints, uh, footprints of minor gods from the past 600 years. Tell me how we have been making history since the day we got here. But <laughs> towards the end of the poem, the relationship between the subject and this alluring center is somewhat inverted. Um, it says, about London, it was never about you. You were never a destination just a vehicle to greater things. You are everybody somewhere else. You're just a dude who let the world tattoo themselves all over his body. And I am the bad idea gap here, Chinese calligraphy on your lower back that you thought meant peace, but really says otters. But you can't quite bring yourself to get rid of me. You know that right? So I made in misinterpretations and bad translations, the cultural interactions entertained by the uh, post-colonial subject with the colonizer, although remaining superficial and exploitative, still leaves a, a mark on the body, uh, making it hybrid, uh, making it listen, as uh, um, she writes in this other poem, uh, uh, the foreign poem. Keep your deep knowledge of your country, of my country. I don't even care if you have you've never heard of it before. Just drop your assumption, read my lips, and listen when we speak. So the complication of the cultural interaction in, uh, um, in the uh, uh, creolize, uh, multiply, uh, intersected uh, subject resides in enjoying uh, being changed. And she writes, I like the way I tweak my accent, choose my clothes and cut my hair. But this constitutes her predicament at to become the other wherever she goes. Uh, since now a being at home does not guarantee a shared identity because when I go back, she, she writes, um, when I go back home, as people stop and stare, muttering just another middle-class hassle, 
corrupted by the West, end of quote. And even more poignantly, not only West and East become irreconcilable, uh, irreconcilable, but uh, uh, even the uh, um, inscription of mainland China as the other is reason for uh, discrimination. But these days, I am more likely to get flack back home for now, for how I speak uh, Chinese. See, my Mandarin's tainted by a Beijing drill. Every generation, there is a new culture to discover, to blame, to hate. But who is them and who is we? And on and on and on it goes, this constant litany of foreign go home, foreign go home, foreign go home. So let me just ups, uh, draw some uh, conclusion or, or glosses, if you like. Um, first of all, among the London poets of Chinese heritage, there is no clear shared uh, sense of shared identity. Uh, they arrived in the UK in different historical moments and from uh, various geographical regions. Um, so the poets who reached London at a, a later stage of their uh, writing career uh, and those who have been living here for most of their lives uh, might not have actually common background and their uh, uh, claim, uh, uh, claimed Chinese identity uh, may in fact be uh, something consider considerably uh, different from one another. Uh, in Two Wei Ming's influential proposition that I mentioned earlier on, the changing meaning of being Chinese entails a new cultural space that he, he writes transcends the ethnic, territorial, linguistic, and religious uh, boundaries that normally define Chineseness. End of quote. And then in such a concept of cultural China, however, Du Weiming uh, uh, um, recognizes uh, three uh, symbolic uh, universes. The first consists of uh, mainland China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Um, that is uh, uh, societies that are populated predominantly uh, by uh, cultural and ethic, ethnic Chinese. And then he uh, recognizes the second uh, um, a sphere that consists of Chinese communities throughout the world. And then finally, the third symbolic universe consists of all uh, those who do not have any direct connection to Chineseness, but who, I quote, try to understand China intellectually, end of quote. And finally, also Brenda Chan, in her study of Chinese national identity among the uh, virtual communities, identifies four different Chinese nations instead of three. Uh, she says the official Chinese nation, which comprises the uh, People's Republic of China citizens, the People's Republic of China's Han nation, the PRC and the compatriots of Taiwan, Hong Kong and Macau. Then we have Chinese who live in other parts of the world. But against these propositions, I argue instead that many more Chinas and respective Chinese identities can be found in the specificity of every intersection uh, between the subject and each of her uh, geographic, uh, geographical context. So, to conclude, the only concrete common denominator among these poets is that they all have experience living in and writing in London. 
And methodologically, this implies the adoption of multiculturalism framework, which has allowed me to uh, uh, ground these poetics, uh, um, uh, poetic works uh, locally in London as an actual scene of writing rather than in relation to demographic data or the uh, irretrievable point of origin. Uh, and equally important is to conceive uh, the London location as unfixed uh, as the point of origin. How am I doing? Am I going too, too, too late? Um, so, okay, I think I, I, I probably stop here. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Hey, thank you, Dr. Bruno. Um, we'll now take some questions from the Q&A box. And uh, every question coming in so far will be answered live. So the first cam uh, question uh, for Dr. Bruno is, uh, what's the role of the language in identity crisis for Chinese descent writers in UK and abroad in general? Yes, as I try to, 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 to showcase here, um, the language uh, is uh, a much more flexible than um, if they, uh, um, when you compare them to writers uh, who have remained in the, um, um, in the PRC. And uh, by this, I mean that is much mm, richer of heterodoxia. So you can see that you have various, uh, not only various languages, for example, English and Chinese put together in the same text, but also there are uh, various cases of vernacular uh, English or vernacular Chinese, that is the familial uh, a version of those languages. So you may have, you know, uh, expressions that are used just within uh, the memory of the, of the person or the subject. Great, thank you. Uh, the second question is for Jenny um, from Sky. Hi Jenny, I'm interested in the MA Korean studies. What do you hope to gain from your MA? Yeah, um, so just to reiterate, I don't know if everyone was here when I wrote in the chat, I'm Jenny, um, I'm the student ambassador here, uh, SOAS on MA Japanese studies, um, and I also did my BA um, in Japanese and Korean at SOAS from 2016 to 2020, so I've been here for five years now. Um, and in terms of my what I want to get out of my MA, I'm um, looking at going into academics anyway. Um, I'm actually, I've been accepted for my PhD that I start in September, um, also at SOAS. Um, uh, yeah, you, they can't get rid of me really. <laughs> um, but my field of interest specifically is um, to do with uh, the representation of people with disabilities in Japan um, and the uh, changes and developments in accessibility technology um, in Japanese businesses over time. Um, so specifically what I have got out of my MA, I guess, is another thing I could add to that is, um, because I mean, I've only got a week of, <laughs> a week of term left, so I'm pretty much done at this point, um, apart from dissertation, obviously. Uh, it's been a lot different than I thought it would be. It's definitely a step up from BA, but I think it's just infinitely more interesting and more, you can delve a lot deeper into the subjects that you're interested in and when you pick the certain modules that um, lecturers tend to be more passionate about it tends to be their kind of their own personal research um, that they're bringing to the lectures so um, it it's honestly it's such an incredible experience and even if you end up going into a career that's completely separate and <laughs> seems completely unrelated just the skills and the kind of analytical viewpoint um, and the kind of non completely detached from any kind of Eurocentrism um, is a lot of the syllabus at SOAS. So I think it's, it's definitely worth exploring and um, it's a good place to study East Asian languages and cultures. I hope that answers your question. 
Great. Thank you, Jenny. Um, there don't appear to be any more questions submitted during the talk. So maybe one minute we'll hold to see if anyone wants to send in a question now. Uh, or if not, we can record it a day. Ah, so we've got another question for Jenny. Uh, hi, Jenny. Curious what your peers uh, pursue post MA if they do not stay in academia, and what kind of support is there for postgrad students? I'm currently considering the MA Chinese Studies program. Hiya. So, um, my peers, from what I've, um, from what I know at the minute, I think a lot of people are still undecided because of the pandemic. Obviously, um, that it's kind of changing up a lot of people's plans. Um, I know that some people plan to find um, jobs within kind of more research oriented positions, at institutions um, in Japan and Korea, from what I know. Um, I've got a friend who's got a job lined up teaching in um, teaching English in Japan um, as soon as she's allowed in. Uh, and a friend in who's currently doing a distance MA, or she's doing the MA at SOAS, but is uh, lined up to do a PhD at, um, you have to excuse me, I can't remember the name of the university, but it's a university in Beijing um, that she did a BA Japanese and Chinese studies with me at, um, at SOAS and then did an MA and now is moving out there. So there's definitely a, a range of options um, I know people who are kind of doing a more uh, translation oriented route um, who are kind of using their degree to use that as there's quite a few translation courses that can help you get uh, practice and the kind of more theory behind it. Um, specifically, I'm thinking of uh, Japanese to English and English to Japanese, but I'm sure that there's similar programs in um, Chinese and obviously Korean. Um, yeah, I think it's a, there's a real variety. And I think just the opportunities and the kind of network you'll be able to gain at SOAS, that not everyone in your class is going to be on your course, um, that there's going to be people from all over the world in all kind of walks of life, all ages, all um, genders, ethnicities, sexualities. That is honestly such a, a diverse experience. You're never going to meet two people who are like exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I hope that <laughs> answers your question. Um, I think there's another question for me about the uh, quality of teaching at SOAS. Um, I think it's, I think all, everyone's adaptive well. I think obviously it's a struggle switching from being there physically at 9 a.m. Um, to sitting on a laptop instead. But I think that the lecturers and students, we've all kind of adapted to it together um, and I think that the teaching is just as good, if not, you know, <laughs> just exactly the same, really. It's the standard hasn't dropped. Um, it's definitely still, there's a lot of access to online journals. SOAS has a lot of kind of resources in terms of um, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean uh, language databases via the library. Um, so if you were doing kind of research that you'd think you'd need to go physically in for you can do it online or there's like a scan and send service um lecturers have lots of office hours that they are you know constantly available um so i don't feel that the the standards change that much um at all really since <laughs> since going online um i think now we've kind of all settled into it that um it's working pretty well Great. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, one more question for Dr. Bruno. Um, is there a difference in the way writers from the PRC and writers from other Chinese speaking countries like Malaysia and Singapore relate to the concept of Chineseness in the works you have studied? Yes, I believe uh, there is a difference for each of these uh, um, writers I have been studying um, and their um, the way they conceive being Chinese and uh, what makes for them Chineseness, um, and uh, it is it is uh, as I said towards the end of my talk, um, it is very much um, um, individual 
um, according to their own um, experience, their uh, their places. Uh, you know, it's it's all it's so varied because you need to uh, um, include the interactions between all these factors in order to you know, uh, 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 define their, um, their own uh, version of Chineseness. Uh, but definitely, uh, you know, there is a, a big difference between uh, um, the country where they come from, but also the countries and the places that they have um, gone in between and then finally also the life that they can use here in London, you know, um, um, Dog Food Chan, for example, she, she had a very um, popular life, if you like, but uh, uh, um, she was uh, populating, squatting, you know, she was the, uh, of a certain uh, uh, social status. <laughs> she was uh, engaging with certain people, but uh, uh, perhaps people of uh, uh, other uh, generations uh, have different uh, engagement uh, uh, socially and, and, and politically and uh, linguistically too. Great, thank you. Um, okay, well, we have time for one more question, I think. And uh, the question is, would you be interested in looking into other writers of Chinese descent in other parts of the UK, such as Manchester? Absolutely. I think that uh, I would love to look at uh, um, other writers of Chinese heritage in rural areas. I think it would be an interesting um, uh, direction for my research, but uh, you know, being in London uh, um, is 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 a special uh, gives me a special advantage because uh, there are so many writers and so many uh, different countries and ling and languages uh, um, concentrated in this area. Um, so for me, it's easier to uh, also contact them and uh, and um, you know find material and uh, interview them and uh, uh, know the know them. Whereas if I have to research um, on writers uh, in a rural area, um, either I know in advance where to look or it's quite difficult. But uh, yes, definitely, it, it, I am very interested in looking also in other, in other um, cities and uh, also rural areas. Great, thank you so much. Right, so I guess all that's left to say is thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, thank you to Jenny for helping out with questions and thank you to Dr. Bruno for giving the talk today. I hope you enjoyed the taste session and hope to see you soon at SOAS. Thank you, Aman. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.